In January 2023, David Cole, a beloved school teacher and high school football coach, was murdered in a quiet suburb of Birmingham. His wife, Jasmine Cole, initially claimed the killing was an act of self-defense. However, the case took a dramatic turn when David's sister, Naomi Cole, a forensic science professor, began her own investigation. Naomi uncovered a web of deceit involving a secret affair, a life insurance scheme, and what appeared to be a meticulously planned crime. The pivotal moment in the case came from an unexpected source, the testimony of David's eight-year-old son, whose account dramatically shifted the direction of the investigation and exposed the truth. David Michael Cole, born March 15, 1985, held the position of head football coach at Woodlawn High School in Birmingham, Alabama, where he had worked since 2012. Standing at 6 feet 2 inches and maintaining an athletic build from his own days as a college football player, Cole was a commanding presence on the field. His annual salary of $52,000 provided a comfortable living for his family, supplemented by additional income from summer football camps he organized. Prior to his coaching career, David had played football at the University of Alabama, where he graduated with honors in physical education in 2007. His transition to coaching was marked by early success, starting as an assistant coach at Minor High School before securing his position at Woodlawn. The Coles resided at 2847 Highland Avenue, a two-story colonial home purchased in 2015 for $285,000. David shared this residence with his wife, Jasmine and Cole, Nate Thompson, born July 8, 1989, and their son Micah David Cole, born September 22, 2014. Jasmine, who graduated from Auburn University with a degree in graphic design in 2011, operated a successful freelance business under the name JC Designs, primarily serving local businesses and occasional national clients. Her portfolio included work for several prominent Birmingham businesses, including the redesign of the popular Mountain Brook Shopping Center's branding and marketing materials. The first documented signs of marital discord emerged in late 2022. Credit card statements revealed Jasmine's increasing expenditures at upscale restaurants and hotels, often during times she claimed to be meeting clients. Between September and December 2022, she made 17 separate dinner charges at the Highland Bar and Grill, averaging $175 per visit. Cell phone records would later show that these dinners coincided with meetings with Nathan Harris, owner of Harris Digital Solutions. Additionally, Jasmine's business trips, which had historically been quarterly events, increased to bi-weekly occurrences with extended stays at luxury hotels in Atlanta and Nashville. Security footage from Micah's school, Mountain Brook Elementary, captured an incident on December 12, 2022, where David and Jasmine engaged in a heated argument during a school Christmas event. Three witnesses, including teacher Sarah Martinez, reported overhearing David questioning Jasmine about her whereabouts the previous evening. Jasmine's response, recorded in Martinez's subsequent police statement, was, You're paranoid, and you're embarrassing me in front of everyone. This public confrontation marked a significant departure from David's typically composed demeanor, according to multiple witness statements. The tension escalated on January 15, 2023, when Micah, then in third grade, overheard a significant confrontation between his parents. In later interviews with child psychologist Dr. Rebecca Chen, Micah revealed that his father had discovered text messages on Jasmine's phone from Nathan Harris. The messages, later recovered by digital forensics, included phrases such as missing you already and can't wait until we can be together properly. During this period, Micah's school records showed a decline in his academic performance, with his teacher noting increased anxiety and withdrawal from social activities. Bank records from this period show David withdrew $5,000 from their joint savings account on January 16, 2023, and consulted with divorce attorney James Wilson. However, he never filed any official paperwork. Wilson's notes from their consultation indicated that David expressed concerns about potential custody arrangements and wanted to gather more evidence before proceeding with any legal action. Wilson would later testify that David appeared devastated but determined to handle the situation legally and with minimal impact on his son. 
The catalyst for the final confrontation occurred when David received an anonymous email on January 20, 2023 containing photographs of Jasmine and Nathan Harris entering the Marriott Hotel on Highway 280 during what was supposed to be a client meeting. The email's metadata would later reveal it was sent by Jennifer Harris, Nathan's wife, who had hired private investigator Marcus Rodriguez to track her husband's activities. The photographs showed multiple meetings over a three-month period, establishing a clear pattern of deception. Jennifer Harris's subsequent statement to police revealed that she had been gathering evidence of the affair for several months, motivated by her own suspicions about her husband's behavior. At 11.47 p.m. on January 21, 2023, Birmingham Emergency Services received multiple 911 calls from residents of Highland Avenue reporting a gunshot at the Cole residence. The first call came from Margaret Wilson at 2845 Highland Avenue, who reported hearing a loud bang followed by screaming. Two additional calls were logged within the next minute from other neighboring properties. Officers James Martinez and Sarah Chen of the Birmingham Police Department arrived on scene at 1152 p.m. Through the front window, they observed David Cole's body lying face up on the living room floor, with Jasmine Cole standing approximately eight feet away, holding a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield 9mm handgun. Body camera footage from Officer Martinez documented Jasmine's initial statement, he was going to kill me. I had to do it. He found out about everything. According to the official police report filed by Detective Ryan Carter, badge number 4872, David Cole was pronounced dead at the scene. The cause of death was determined to be a single gunshot wound to the chest, with the bullet entering at a 45-degree downward angle, suggesting the shooter was standing while the victim was either sitting or rising from a seated position. The medical examiner, Dr. Patricia Santos, noted gunpowder stippling indicating the shot was fired from approximately three feet away. The weapon recovered at the scene was registered to David Cole, purchased legally on March 3, 2019, from Birmingham Firearms. The gun's location in the household was documented as being stored in a locked safe in the master bedroom closet. Crime scene investigators found the safe open, with no signs of forced entry, indicating it had been opened using the correct combination. Initial evidence processing revealed David's fingerprints were found on the gun's grip and barrel, Jasmine's fingerprints were present on the trigger and grip, Gunshot residue was found on both David's and Jasmine's hands, a broken coffee table and overturned chair suggested a physical altercation, and David's phone was found on the couch, displaying the email containing photos of Jasmine and Nathan Harris. The crime scene unit, led by forensic specialist Dr. Marcus Thompson, documented blood spatter patterns inconsistent with Jasmine's initial claim of self-defense. The spatter analysis suggested David was seated on the couch when shot, rather than advancing toward Jasmine as she had claimed. Additionally, David's defensive wounds, noted in the autopsy report, were minimal and appeared superficial. Eight-year-old Micah Cole was discovered by Officer Chen in his upstairs bedroom, hidden under his Batman-themed bed covers. The child was immediately attended to by trauma specialist Dr. Rebecca Wilson, who noted signs of acute stress response. Micah's initial statement, recorded by Dr. Wilson, mentioned hearing Daddy yelling about pictures and another man's voice before the gunshot. Jasmine Cole was taken into custody and transported to Birmingham Central Precinct. During initial processing, she maintained her claim of self-defense, stating that David had become enraged after confronting her about the affair with Nathan Harris. According to booking officer Michael Rodriguez's report, Jasmine claimed David had retrieved the gun from their safe during the argument, leading to a struggle that ended with her gaining control of the weapon and firing in self-defense. The neighborhood response was swift and divided. Police collected statements from 12 neighbors, with four reporting hearing arguments from the Cole residents over the previous weeks, three specifically mentioned seeing an unknown vehicle later identified as belonging to Nathan Harris, parked nearby on multiple occasions, two residents, both long-term neighbors, provided statements about David's character, describing him as unfailingly gentle and incapable of violence, and three others supported Jasmine's claims, citing incidents where they had heard David raising his voice during arguments. 
The crime scene investigation continued through January 22nd, with forensics teams collecting security camera footage from three neighboring houses, audio recordings from a ring doorbell device, DNA samples from blood spots found in multiple locations, fiber evidence from the living room carpet, partial fingerprints from various surfaces, and electronic devices belonging to both David and Jasmine. The initial review of forensic evidence revealed significant inconsistencies in Jasmine's self-defense claim. The medical examiner's report, conducted by Dr. Patricia Santos, documented the bullet's downward trajectory of 45 degrees, entering through David's upper left chest and lodging in his lower right back. This trajectory analysis, combined with blood spatter patterns on the living room wall, definitively placed David in a seated position on the couch at the time of the shooting contradicting Jasmine's claim that he was advancing toward her aggressively. Gunshot residue analysis performed by the Alabama Department of Forensic Sciences showed minimal residue on David's palms, but heavy concentration on the back of his hands. According to ballistics expert Dr. James Morrison, this pattern typically indicates defensive positioning rather than weapon discharge. The distribution pattern proved incompatible with Jasmine's account of a struggle over the weapon, suggesting instead that David had raised his hands in a defensive gesture before the shot. Detective Carter's investigation uncovered troubling financial evidence. On October 15, 2022, Jasmine Cole had purchased a life insurance policy through Prudential Financial, naming herself as the sole beneficiary of a $750,000 payout. The policy application, processed by Agent Michael Thompson, contained several concerning details. Jasmine had initially requested a $1.5 million policy but settled for the lower amount after preliminary underwriting. The policy notably included a suicide clause but maintained double indemnity for accidental death or murder. Financial records painted a picture of mounting financial pressure. Jasmine's credit card statements revealed accumulated debt of $127,843 across six cards, with minimum payments totaling $3,425 monthly. Bank records showed recurring ATM withdrawals at Mountain Brook Mall, averaging $500 to $1,000 weekly, with transactions often occurring near high-end retailers Gucci and Louis Vuitton. Furthermore, investigators discovered a separate bank account in Jasmine's name at Regions Bank, containing deposits of $45,000 from Nathan Harris's business account over the previous four months. The breakthrough in the investigation came through Micah's extended interview with child psychologist Dr. Rebecca Wilson. During their third session, Micah revealed crucial details about the night of January 21st. He described hearing three distinct voices downstairs, his father's, his mother's, and an unfamiliar male voice he had heard before during his mother's work calls. Security footage obtained from neighboring houses confirmed a dark-colored BMW, matching Nathan Harris's vehicle description, parked two houses down from the Cole residence at 11.15 p.m., departing hastily at 11.49 p.m., two minutes after the shooting. Text messages recovered from Jasmine's phone showed communication with Harris throughout the day, including a message sent at 10.45 p.m. reading he knows everything. Come over after he's asleep. Harris replied at 11.05 p.m. on my way. Don't do anything until I get there. One particularly incriminating message from Jasmine dated January 18th read, The insurance policy clears next week. We need to figure this out before he files for divorce. The investigation also revealed that Nathan Harris had purchased a burner phone from a convenience store on Highway 280 on January 20th. Cell tower data showed this phone actively communicating with Jasmine's phone in the hours leading up to David's death, suggesting premeditation and coordination. The phone was later recovered from a dumpster behind Harris's office, containing only partially deleted text messages discussing meeting times and contingency plans. Birmingham Police Department's forensics team conducted additional analysis of the crime scene on January 25th, discovering previously overlooked evidence. A partial shoe print in blood, found behind the living room couch, matched the size and pattern of shoes later seized from Nathan Harris's home. DNA analysis of cigarette butts found in the Cole's backyard matched Harris's DNA profile, placing him at the scene on multiple occasions prior to the murder. 
Nathan Harris, aged 42, founded Harris Digital Solutions in 2018, growing it into a successful marketing firm with annual revenue exceeding $2.5 million. The initial connection between Harris and Jasmine Cole began in June 2022, when his company contracted JC Designs for a website redesign project valued at $15,000. Electronic communications obtained from Harris Digital Solutions servers showed regular business correspondence evolving into personal exchanges by late July 2022. A comprehensive analysis of both parties' phone records, subpoenaed from AT&T, documented 847 calls and 2,436 text messages exchanged between August and January. Their communication pattern showed increasing frequency, with calls often occurring between 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. Notably, both parties purchased secondary phones from different Metro PCS locations in September 2022, using cash transactions to avoid detection. These burner phones maintained consistent communication until the night of the murder. Digital evidence recovered from Jasmine's iCloud account revealed hundreds of deleted messages discussing their relationship and future plans. A message thread from December 15th contained detailed discussions about divorcing their respective spouses. Harris wrote, Jennifer would take everything if she found out. We need to be smarter. Jasmine's reply read, David would never let me have custody of Micah. I can't lose my son. Subsequent messages showed escalating desperation, culminating in Jasmine's January 18th text, I can't live like this anymore. We need to end it soon. Harris's initial police interview on January 28, 2023, conducted by Detective Carter and recorded on police video, lasted four hours. He admitted to a sexual relationship with Jasmine but claimed it had ended in December 2022. When presented with evidence of his presence near the Cole residence on January 21st, Harris modified his statement, acknowledging he was there to support Jasmine during an expected confrontation with David. He maintained he remained in his vehicle until hearing the gunshot, then fled in panic. Forensic analysis of Harris's BMW, conducted by the Alabama Department of Forensic Sciences, yielded crucial evidence contradicting his statement. Gunshot residue was detected on the passenger seat and door handle. DNA analysis of fibers found in the vehicle matched carpet samples from the Coles living room. The vehicle's GPS system, despite attempted deletion, retained data showing it parked two houses down from the Cole residence from 11.15 p.m. to 11.49 p.m. on January 21st. Jennifer Harris, Nathan's wife of 15 years, provided investigators with additional context during her January 30th interview. She reported significant changes in her husband's behavior beginning in mid-2022, including unexplained expenses and late-night absences. Bank records showed Harris withdrew $175,000 from the joint business account between September 2022 and January 2023. Jennifer discovered surveillance photos of Nathan and Jasmine together in December 2022, hiring private investigator Marcus Rodriguez to document their activities. Of particular interest was footage from January 19th, showing Harris handling what appeared to be a firearm in his office parking lot while speaking with Jasmine. Employee interviews from Harris Digital Solutions revealed that Jasmine frequently visited the office outside of normal business hours. Office manager Sarah Thompson recalled overhearing a heated conversation between Harris and Jasmine on January 20th, during which Jasmine reportedly said, it has to be tomorrow. He's going to tell Jennifer everything. Security footage from the office that day showed the couple in Harris's private office for three hours, with Jasmine leaving visibly distressed. Forensic accounting investigation revealed Harris had researched offshore banking options and made inquiries about property purchases in countries without U.S. extradition treaties. His internet search history showed multiple queries about gun residue detection and cleaning methods, as well as searches for perfect murder techniques and claiming self-defense in Alabama. The State of Alabama v. Jasmine Cole and Nathan Harris commenced on April 15, 2023, in the Jefferson County Circuit Court, presided over by Judge Maria Rodriguez. 
District Attorney Thomas Bradford led the prosecution, while defense attorneys James Wilson and Sarah Mitchell represented Jasmine Cole and Nathan Harris, respectively. Forensic specialist Dr. Marcus Thompson demonstrated through blood spatter analysis and bullet trajectory that David Cole was seated when shot, directly contradicting Jasmine's self-defense claim. Using a laser projection system, Dr. Thompson showed the jury how the 45-degree downward angle of the bullet path was inconsistent with any scenario involving David as the aggressor. The defense strategy centered on portraying David Cole as controlling and potentially violent. Defense attorney Wilson presented text messages from Jasmine to friends expressing fear of her husband. However, cross-examination by ADA Thompson revealed these messages began only after the affair with Harris commenced. Former colleagues and players from Woodlawn High School testified to David's gentle nature and mentorship abilities, undermining the defense's characterization. The trial's pivotal moment came during 8-year-old Micah Cole's testimony on April 22nd. Child psychologist Dr. Rebecca Wilson prepared the court for Micah's appearance, establishing protocols to minimize trauma. In age-appropriate questioning led by ADA Thompson, Micah revealed hearing three adult voices downstairs before the shooting. When asked specifically about what he saw when he peeked down the stairs, Micah testified to seeing Nathan Harris holding the gun while his mother stood nearby. Defense attempts to discredit Micah's testimony through cross-examination were limited by Judge Rodriguez, who sustained multiple prosecutorial objections regarding aggressive questioning of a minor. The jury's visible reaction to Micah's testimony, noted by court reporters, marked a turning point in the trial. Forensic accountant Robert Martinez detailed the financial entanglement between Jasmine and Nathan, documenting over $175,000 in transfers and expenditures related to their relationship. Cell phone expert Timothy Brooks mapped the defendant's movements on the night of the murder using tower data, proving Nathan's presence at the scene despite his initial denials. The prosecution's case concluded with testimony from Jennifer Harris, Nathan's wife, who described discovering the affair and hiring a private investigator. Her testimony included evidence of Nathan liquidating assets and researching countries without extradition treaties in the weeks before David's death. In closing arguments, District Attorney Bradford methodically connected the evidence demonstrating premeditation, financial motivation, and collaboration between the defendants. Defense attorneys argued reasonable doubt, suggesting the shooting occurred during an emotional confrontation rather than as part of a conspiracy. The jury, comprising seven women and five men, deliberated for 96 hours over four days. On April 30, 2023, they returned with unanimous verdicts. Jasmine Cole was found guilty of second-degree murder, facing 25 years to life imprisonment. Nathan Harris was convicted of manslaughter and conspiracy to commit murder, with potential sentences totaling 35 years. Juror number four, Patricia Martinez, stated, The premeditation was clear once we saw how they planned everything, from the insurance policy to their escape plans. Judge Rodriguez scheduled sentencing for May 15, 2023, ordering both defendants held without bail. The prosecution announced its intention to seek maximum sentences, citing the calculated nature of the crime and its impact on Micah Cole. Both sentences carried minimum service requirements before parole eligibility. On June 1, 2023, the Jefferson County Family Court granted Dr. Naomi Cole full legal guardianship of Micah Cole. The transition required Micah to transfer from Woodlawn Elementary to Mountain Brook Elementary, where the school's counseling department, led by Dr. Sarah Anderson, implemented a specialized support program for children dealing with trauma. Micah began weekly sessions with child psychologist Dr. Rebecca Wilson, who noted his remarkable resilience while documenting the complex emotional challenges he faced. Naomi Cole's academic expertise in criminal justice transformed into passionate advocacy for families affected by domestic violence. In August 2023, she established the David Cole Foundation with an initial endowment of $500,000, primarily funded through David's life insurance policy, which after legal proceedings, was redirected from Jasmine to Micah's trust fund. 
the foundation partnered with the University of Alabama's Department of Social Work to develop intervention programs for at-risk families and support services for children who lost parents to domestic violence. Micah's adjustment to his new life reflected both struggles and triumphs. His academic performance initially suffered, but by the end of third grade, his teachers reported significant improvement. He excelled particularly in basketball, wearing his father's number 23 and playing in a youth league where David had once coached. The annual David Cole Memorial Basketball Tournament, established by Woodlawn High School in partnership with the Foundation, became a platform for community healing and youth engagement. Naomi converted David's home office into a memory room, preserving photographs, awards, and personal items that told the story of David's life as a teacher, coach, and father. She instituted Dad Story Sundays, where she and Micah would share memories of David, ensuring his presence remained vivid in Micah's life. Through these sessions, Micah began to process his grief while maintaining a strong connection to his father's values and teachings. The case's impact extended beyond the immediate family. The Birmingham Police Department incorporated lessons from the investigation into their domestic violence response training. Detective Ryan Carter, working with the David Cole Foundation, developed a protocol for identifying financial motivations in domestic violence cases, which was adopted by law enforcement agencies across Alabama. Jasmine's attempts to appeal her conviction were denied in March 2024. Her required participation in prison rehabilitation programs revealed a pattern of narcissistic behavior and manipulation, leading to enhanced psychological screening protocols in the state's domestic violence prevention programs. Nathan Harris's business assets were liquidated, with the proceeds directed to victim compensation and the foundation's programs. For Micah, now nine years old, the path forward remained challenging but hopeful. His resilience, supported by Naomi's unwavering dedication, manifested in small but significant ways. He maintained an A-B average in school, participated in community service through the foundation, and showed particular interest in helping other children cope with loss. His father's lessons about integrity, perseverance, and compassion became cornerstone principles in his life. 